Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week, it's all about the best of 2014 as we celebrate the finest moments from the season past. We honor the players, we relive the emotions, and cheer on the successes of another great year in badminton. Ever since its inauguration in 2007, the BWF World Super Series Finals has continued to up the ante for the elite of the sport, with the quest for badminton glory getting more prestigious each year. In a bid to push the envelope further, the Badminton World Federation has partnered with one of the globe's most iconic sporting capitals, Dubai, to host the season-ending showpiece. Titled the BWF Destination Dubai World Super Series Finals, the four-year partnership promises to increase the star power of the tournament. There's no doubt in my mind that this is actually uh, world-class. Uh, knowing that uh, Dubai is uh, actually having more than 400 events a year, even though that is not a, a badminton known area, they are really producing on the very highest level and I believe if you ask uh, the players as well, they would actually say the same, that this treatment is unique, it is special. So I do hope that uh, we will also see us for not only the four years that we have made a deal on, so uh, I actually think that this is of an interesting place for badminton. The event was not only spectacular off the court, but there were some fireworks on it as well. Having been captivated by some outstanding action for four days, the finals also produced some moments of magic. We start with the men's doubles, where world number one pairing of Lee Yongdae and Yu Yeonsung were hoping to finally win a top tournament after coming up short in the Worlds and Asian Games. Across the net from them were the surprise package of Tai Piao and Hong Wei. The unfancy pair had combined well all tournament to make it to the final. And they set about proving the point as they withstood an early onslaught from their opponents to take a tight opening game 21-19. They gave the Koreans a mighty scare in the second as they came within two points of causing an upset before they eventually succumbed 19-21. Lee and Yu took it from there and despite a late charge by the Chinese, they wrapped up the match and got their hands on the cherished trophy. And the Koreans have won the title in a three-game thriller. We were still nervous in the first game and the second game, but we were able to win as we got over the nervousness in the third set. I believe we made a good result as we never gave up the game until the end. I have a strong partnership with Yu Yong Song. In the women's doubles, it was world number one up against world number two. China's Zhao Yunlei and Tian Qing have been the world's best for a while and were looking to round off another strong season. History wasn't on Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi's side. In the previous 11 meetings between the set of players, they had only won twice. But this was a different Japanese duo, full of confidence and desire after topping the destination Dubai rankings, and it showed. They fought, they schemed, they combined, and most of all, they believed. After two punishing games in which, on occasions, the points lasted for more than 100 strokes, they prevailed to claim their first World Super Series Finals crown. Matsutomo and Takahashi embrace because they have won the Destination Dubai Super Series Finals. <laughs> we didn't have any specific strategy or thoughts going into the match. We were just determined to beat our Chinese opponents, so we are really happy to have done that. In the women's singles, it was last season's losing finalist, Tai Tsuying, up against Song Ji Hyun of Korea. Tai had outlasted crowd favourite Saina Newal in the semis in a three-gamer, and many wondered if she would have the energy to beat the crafty Song. But no one should have worried. The 20-year-old from Chinese Taipei had plenty in reserve. Her all-action game was simply too much for the Korean. Displaying some outstanding skill with outrageous angled shots played at pace, she wrapped up the match in straight games. 
It was her fourth Super Series title of her young career. And Tai Su Ying has gone one better than a year ago. I didn't expect the game to go as smoothly as she did. Whenever I played her in the past, it's been tough and I would get very tired. But I felt good this time and she seemed out of sorts, making lots of errors. In the men's singles, it was world champion Chen Long up against surprise finalist Hans Christian Wittingus. The Dane had shown fantastic form throughout the tournament, defeating fellow countryman and world number three Jano Jorgensen in the semi finals. But Chen was to be a completely different proposition. The number one seed had been in commanding form in 2014, and it showed in this match. His power, precision, and shot selection was on full display as he picked apart Wittingus. Every error was ruthlessly punished with the Dane wilting under the insistent pressure. Chen took the championship in straight games to grab his second World Super Series title. Chen Wong regains the title that he held two years ago. I only wanted to play my best and fight for each and every point. There have been so many fans out here to watch and support me, so I really wanted to play well and give them a really good show. As such, it wasn't really about the result, just that I won. The mixed doubles brought the tournament to a close. It was an all-China affair. Olympic and world champions Zhao Yunlei and Zhang Nan up against Liu Cheng and Bao Yixin. Having lost out in the women's doubles, Zhao was keen to grab the mixed gold, and partner Zhang was more than happy to help. The pair breezed through the match in quick time as they took it 21-15, 21-12. So with that, the first ever BWF Destination Dubai World Super Series Finals came to a close. The on-court action was matched by the off-court experience. All went away with a sense of that badminton has taken another leap forward and will be looking to improve further in 2015. Steak. Pasta. Uh, going out with friends. Going out with friends and drink some beer. <laughs> <laughs> USA. Maldives. Winning our final group match and making it to the quarterfinals of the Olympics 2012. Same. Um, probably Barack Obama, because he's a very, uh, I think he's a very interesting guy and he's at the moment at least one of the most powerful politicians of the world. Uh, Lukas Podolski, <laughs> 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 he's a football player and he is from Cologne and a big hero in my city. Kane Yamaguchi, the current world junior champion. What a shot, what an angle. That is unbelievable. How did she create that? Oh, that's nicely done. Yamaguchi, she's 17. We're in Copenhagen after the break as the Danish capital hosted the BWF World Championships. The world's finest badminton players congregated in Copenhagen, Denmark in August for the 2014 BWF World Championships. It was the fourth time the Danish capital was hosting the event, the last of which was back in 1999 we look back at the best of the finals action. First up was the women's doubles final. This was an all-Chinese affair with a pairing of Tianqing and Cao Yunlei in blue facing off against two-time world champions Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. 
It was a rematch of the 2011 final, which saw Wang and Yu taking the world title in straight games. Tian and Zhao were determined to avenge that defeat, taking the first game with Zhao delivering the decisive smash. They continued to dominate the contest and wrapped up proceedings in straightforward fashion, winning the second game at 21-15. It was the duo's first world title. The men's doubles saw two sets of Koreans face off, with the world number one pairing of Lee Yong-tae and Yu yong sung the overwhelming favourites. The duo were on a 19-match winning streak and were looking to make it 20 against Ko Song-hyun and Shin Baek cho But Ko and Shin were in a rebellious mood. Ko with the powerful smash to reach game point, they went on to wrap it up 22-20. Ko and Shin kept up the momentum in the second game and were within a point of winning the world championships. But the world number one pair were made of stern stuff, Lee leveling at 20 all. That's all they needed as they went on to take the second 23-21. But Ko and Shin were not to be denied as they took the decider 21-18. A momentous achievement for the underdogs. It was a case of David versus Goliath in the women's singles final, with top seed Lee Xue Rei heavily favoured against ninth seed Carolina Marin of Spain. Things began according to the form book, with Lee taking the first game with relative ease, 21-17. But things began to change in the second, as Marin demonstrated her well-known grit. She found her rhythm in the second game, winning it 21-17. With confidence high, she pressed home her advantage. And after a grueling 79-minute duel, Marin prevailed, winning 21-18 to register another tournament shock. The 21-year-old became the first Spaniard to win a World Championship. I think that was a fantastic win. I, I think I was just as surprised as everybody else, but I think it's, it's huge for badminton. I think it's really good. And uh, for Spain, being such a small badminton nation, I think it's a fantastic achievement, so uh, all good for the game. The men's singles final saw world number one Li Chongwei against China's Chen Long. The 31-year-old had always been the bridesmaid, never the bride, at the World Championships. With his arch-rival Lin Dan not in Copenhagen, many were tipping him to finally win it. Chen, however, had ambitions of his own, and he took the first game 21-19 in 32 minutes. Lee showed flashes of brilliance in the second, but a costly error at the net meant it was Chun who emerged victorious after 68 minutes. Lee failing for the third time, while Chun Long claimed his first world title at the age of 25. The finale was the mixed doubles, which was dominated by China. This was a repeat of the Olympic final between the pairing of Ma Jin and Xu Chen and world number one Zhao Yunlei and Zhang Nan. Zhang and Zhao displayed their supremacy in the first game, sealing it at 21-12. Ma and Xu fought back in the second, eventually taking it 23-21. Zhang and Zhao, however, underlined their class in the deciding game winning at 21-13 to claim their second world title following their success in 2011. A goal again, it, see, it says everything, I think. If you can, can be the world champion for, for many, many years in a row, then you must be the best pair overall. Um, so uh, they are strong, they are really, really strong together. The World Championships produced its usual mix of shocks and elation as new stars were born. The 2015 edition will be in Jakarta, Indonesia. We're looking forward to it. As the season came to a close, there seemed no better time to celebrate the best players of 2014. And that was exactly the thinking of the Badminton World Federation as they used the BWF Destination Dubai World Super Series Finals to honour the finest this season. 
the lavish Four Seasons Resort hosted the Players' Reception and Gala Dinner and also Players of the Year prize giving. Chunlong was awarded the Male Player of the Year title. The 25-year-old carried his good form of 2013 into this year. He is the current men's singles world champion. He's won two World Super Series titles and was a finalist in three others. His combination of power, precision and suffocating pressure play had seen him become the dominant player of 2014. I have done well this year, even though there's been some bad periods. Each game has been memorable and I look to do better next year. So I'm pleased with the award. It's a recognition of the hard work I've put in this year. If Chen Long had been dominant, then compatriot Zhao Yunlei had been masterful. The 28-year-old double specialist rightfully took home the Female Player of the Year prize after a truly remarkable 2014. She won six World Super Series titles this season and is the current world champion in both the women's and mixed doubles format. I didn't expect to win this award. I've always wanted to be the player of the year, but I didn't put pressure on myself to achieve this, so I'm happy and surprised to win. In Denmark, I was the world champion in two categories. That's my best performance and result of the year. It's a recognition of my hard work. Both players also claimed winners' medals at the season-ending tournament in Dubai to cap off an outstanding 2014. That's good. What a smash! This is brilliant. Oh, she produces a magic shot. She's done it. The European champion is now the world champion. This is the most extraordinary result in the history of the world championships. On the other side of the break, we relive the best moments from the leaning Thomas and Uber Cup 2014. I couldn't believe it. It was unreal, and I was really very happy that we had won. It's an event that I've always yearned for, an important event. I was really happy when we won. I'm elected to have fought as one with the rest of the team and won the cup. This was probably the biggest story of 2014. Japan made it into the history books by storming into their maiden Thomas Cup final, then took it all when they claimed the most prestigious team title in badminton, defeating five-time champions Malaysia. This is very special for me to win Thomas Cup. Actually, my, when I was a player, I never win to the, this Thomas Cup. but. When I coaching to some countries, also my it's a big target is uh, in Thomas Cup. So when I was in England, when I was in Malaysia, is I couldn't win the Thomas Cup. But finally in Japan, I wait it's uh, ten years, but it's, uh, finally I get the Thomas Cup. The Festival of Badminton, that is the Thomas and Uber Cup Finals, was held in the Indian capital city of New Delhi in May this year. Getting to the finals of the events took on a different look this time round. Out went the regional tournaments to decide qualification, and in came a ranking-based system, with nations being invited based on the BWF World Team rankings. 
The number of teams at the tournament was also increased from 12 to 16, making it the biggest yet, with Chinese Taipei and France making their Thomas Cup debut. Nine-time champions China were the overwhelming favourites, and Lin Dan's return to the national side gave them an added impetus. But the defending champions were aware of tough competition. We have worked very hard in the past one year. The success of the players always depends on how they perform during training. As for Team China, we like to review our performance after each competition and plan for the next one. Coming into this tournament, we know that it's not going to be easy. We are aware of some very tough opponents, teams like Japan, Korea and India. They are the dark horses who could be very strong contenders. And rightfully, Japan made it to the semi-finals for a third consecutive time where they squared off against China. The Japanese put on a sensational performance in the semi-finals to crush five-time defending champions China 3-0 to book their spot in the finals against 2002 finalist Malaysia, putting an end to the badminton powerhouse's decade-old Thomas Cup reign. The score was 2-0 and it was up to me to make it or break it. I went on the court with the intention of winning. I was numbed with happiness at that instant when I won. First-time finalists Japan were undeterred when they faced five-time champions Malaysia in the finals. The two teams put on a strong fight that lasted over six hours with the tournament being decided in the fifth match. And it was 25-year-old Takuma Ueda who pushed his nation across the finish line. Japan! have rewritten the record books. The Japanese team go wild in celebration. At the instant when I won, I really did not know what to feel. My mind went blank. It was such an overwhelming feeling. The reality of winning the Thomas Cup only sank in when I lifted the trophy. Over at the Women's Championship, 13-time winners Team China were looking to defend their title when they clashed with 2010 winners South Korea in the semi-finals. The top-seeded Chinese shuttlers made it look easy with a 3-0 victory. Team India made history by entering the Uber Cup semi-finals for the first time and put on a brave fight versus five-time champions Japan. But they had to settle for bronze when they lost 2-3. In the finals, it was China versus Japan, with the Chinese team determined to retain their title. World number one and two, Li Xuerei and Wang Shixian, led the team to their 13th title with straight games wins in their singles matches. And Zhao Yunlei and Wang Xiaoli sealed the victory in the second doubles with just 37 minutes on the clock. China continuing their dominance in the Uber Cup. Few global badminton tournaments can match the joyous nature of the Thomas and Uber Cups. Individual accolades give way to the national pride in this carnival of badminton brilliance. Japan's triumph in India and its humbling of China has become an instant classic in the history of the Thomas Cup. Will the new year herald emerging badminton nations in the spotlight? The future sure looks bright. Time to find out what's happening in 2015 on the international circuit with our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we catch up with Denmark's number one mixed doubles pairing, Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Pedersen. And we look ahead to what to expect in 2015. See you next year.